Alrighty, y'all, as a special treat today, uh, we're gonna go ahead and post the final answer for the back. This is gonna include some muscles that you probably don't think about when you you know you look at a well developed back like your obliques and your uh, they're called the sternocleidomastoid. It's just that meaty part of the front of your neck that you can see from the back, uh, as well as some things to think about just in terms of how you make certain exercises emphasize different parts of your back. The very simple principle. I'm not going to use any galaxy brain terms here. That's just not what I want to do. I want to explain these things simply so that you can apply them, pick exercises that fall in certain categories, and make your own programs. I really appreciate all the people that reach out to me for you know custom programs, coaching, so on and so forth. But ultimately, I want y'all to be able to do this yourself too. If you trust me enough to outsource it, I always greatly appreciate that but i want to give you all the tools to help yourself as well I was going to save this for wednesday but uh i took the day off to kind of stay in the house and and catch up on some paperwork one of my friends passed away their life was taken actually um you know so i'm someone where you know when something like that happens work is always the best thing to help me cope with that i miss you soldier um, you deserve better than what happened to you. But we're going to get into the back training today. So just like with the last video, there's stretch and squeeze. You know, stretch. Squeeze. Like I said, y'all, I don't know if I spelled squeeze right, but these, again, mean stretch is lengthened, squeeze, short. And then there's also mid-range stuff that starts in the middle of stretch or squeeze, which is, you know, something that I don't think we'll touch on today too much, just because if you cover both of these, you're, you're, you're going to be pretty well good to go. Most back movements, by the way, you know, you can make them accomplish both of those things at the same time, depending upon, but we'll talk about that. So the biggest chunk that we're going to talk about first, before we get into specific exercises that I like for each part of your, you know, your back, so your rear delts, your traps, your upper back, your, your lower back, so on and so forth. People say, well, I don't ever feel my rear delts during rows, or I never feel my lats during pull-ups, or I only feel my upper back during pull-ups. Which muscles are targeted with a pull-up or a pull-down has entirely to do with where your arm is, right? So we'll draw some arrows. I'm not going to get into all the biomechanics or all the big fucking words that come into, into play with this, but the closer your arm is to being parallel with your rib cage, the more it's going to emphasize your lats. If you come out, it's going to be a blend of lats and upper back and rear delts. And then if you come not completely flared out like this, but more so like that, it's going to target rear delts, upper back and traps. It just has to do with where your humerus, your fucking arm is oriented relative to your torso. So this alone, without going into anything else, is going to revolutionize your training. So again, arms down, lats, arms 45, a blend of everything, arms out, fucking rear delts and upper back. Where people talk about, well, you know, I never feel my lats. I'm doing this exercise and I am. No, you're not. Take a look at your form. And this is where, you know, recording yourself training comes into play. Look at where your arm ends up on the fully shortened when you squeeze at the end of the concentric. Look and see where your arm ends up. If you start here, but in the course of you doing the rep, you come out and your arm is right there, it, it makes sense that you don't feel your lats, you know what I'm saying? Because you didn't keep your arms there. Now, there are, you know, just different exercises that you can use to just make keeping your arm in place more intuitive. Anything with 
a fixed grip, for example, you know, where, you know, your, your grip is either fixed here or here, where your fucking wrist goes, your body tends to follow. So if your wrist is out here, you're going to tend to stay more angled, where if it's neutral, you're going to tend to stay, you know, arms closer, or even if it's, you know, like this, it'll be arms closer. There are a few different exercises that I'm going to talk about right now to emphasize different parts of it that I really enjoy personally. So for lats, and like I said, this is foolproof, like you have no body awareness, you don't have the wherewithal to keep your arm in place without, you know, the exercise just necessitating that by itself. Lats, okay? Let me not embarrass myself by spelling neutral wrong. Neutral grip. Pull downs. Or pull ups. It's really fucking hard for when your wrist is oriented neutrally for your arm to not follow in that same direction, right? So neutral grip pull ups are really going to target your lats. But anything with a neutral grip is really going to target your lats. So that's anything like, you know... Dumbbell seal rows, neutral grip, whatever the case may be. Spoiler alert with a lot of these exercises, by the way, the variations are very minimal, okay? So the only variation is going to be with your grip width. It's just that with dumbbells, it's pretty intuitive to keep your, you know, your, your arm neutral again. So these are foolproof variations. Upper back. A chest supported T bar row. Why is that? Most T bars either have a grip that comes out like this or one that's at an angle like that. Come back to over here. If you're between here and here with your arm, that's upper back and lats, or excuse me, upper back and rear delts, you know. Once you venture out from your rib cage, the more it starts to turn into an upper back or rear delt movement. Chest supported T-bar rows, again, because of the grip, make you stay exactly right there. And then for rear delts, rear delts, anything with the snatch grip. Spell variations wrong. Anything with a snatch grip. I'm not the best speller, y'all. Spell check be saving my ass with these comment replies because I'm struggling. I struggle with the with the spelling. But anyway, anything with a snatch grip, again, for that very reason, you're coming out wide. You're going to tend to pull like this, and it's going to be entirely rear delts, entirely upper back. Again, those are foolproof exercises to target each of these things. But if you keep this in mind and you just build body awareness, you can make really any exercise bias whatever part of your back that you want it to in terms of like the upper back. So that's this part of the lecture. Now we're going to talk about um, just some general movements that are going to help you get a good flex and a good stretch with each of these exercises. That's gonna include lower back. We're gonna talk about that as well because the spinal erectors do also have a flexion function to them. They're not just an isometric contractor, okay? So we'll start with the traps, okay? So this is something that, you know, younger guys, traps are the new abs, traps. And we're gonna start with fully, eh, fully shortened. Again, that just means squeeze. All right, so anything where you contract your lats at the top is gonna give you a fully shortened position. So we're talking about shrugs, 
overhead press where when you do it with proper form, you are contracting your, your traps at the top. Um, I really like shrugs with a hinge. And what that does when you hinge, it lets you target a little bit of your upper back as well. These are your bread and butter, so these three. Now we'll go into fully lengthened, it's a stretch. Power shrugs. Farmer's carries. This is actually a really good one here. Dumbbell lunges. Never think of that as a trap exercise, but it is. The entire set, so let's say you do a 12 rep set of lunges per leg. Your upper back is gonna be lit up. Your traps are gonna be lit up at the end of that set. And then multiply that over three sets. Dude, that's gonna be a hell of a burner. And because purely it's fully lengthening, your traps as you continue the set your traps are under constant time under tension that's probably this low key besides like farmer's carries is probably the best one for you because it has the most time under tension and it may actually be better than farmer's carries for the purpose of building your traps in that lengthened position because farmer's carries you load up with a ton of weight and you're not really under a ton of time under tension now, a blend of both, okay? So we talked about how with anything relating to your back, you can do a blend of both, blend. Shrugs are a blend of both. Uh, power shrugs can be a blend of both if you're making sure to contract at the top. Any anything like that so any shrug so anything that starts and stops with you sh you know supporting the weight and your arms are hanging at the bottom those are all good for traps okay start with fully shortened you hit your fully lengthened and then you you know you include a a, a blend of both we're going to go into the rear delts now rear delts I'll just go through my favorite movements in general. Most of these are going to be shortened exercises just because with rear delts, they get worked so minimally that you don't really have to necessarily worry about getting a full stretch on them just because people don't work them at all. So I'm just going to go through my favorite movements. Um, and again, keep in mind, arms need to be out. You know, it's intuitive. So when you do a rear delt fly, you're not going to have your fucking arm down here. You're going to have it up here. Powell raises. Cable. Rear delt flies. And again, these are all shortened exercises. Short. Snatch grip rows. There you go. Those this is literally all you need. Rear delts are a small exercise, so you could do these two, spam them continuously, and just beat the books on them. And by beat the books, I mean you just continuously either add a little weight, uh, extra set, extra rep. Even if you have to sacrifice a little bit of rep quality, it's such a small muscle group that it's going to benefit from that. It's not something like your chest where like if you do sloppier reps, it's not going to really give you a good return or as good of a return as just increasing rep quality. If you, if you get, do what you got to do to safely move the weight, I'm not saying fucking use your entire body to move it on a power raise, but if you know you have to include a little bit of torso movement into it with from your obliques to power the movement go for it beat the books progress your rear delts are going to get bigger with those things then we covered 
traps um neck this is probably something that you guys want to talk about too because neck is something that people are strangely very obsessed with so neck responds to a lot of rep quality okay now i'm of the opinion that you can work your neck with things like deads anything actually loaded so squats very, very rarely are you going to find someone that has a big deadlift or a big squat and they're using a reasonable range of motion and they don't have neck hypertrophy. You can maximize it with these exercises, though. So these are like you better be doing those like one or the other. OK, so this goes without saying. But in terms of my favorite movements, if I were to program them, I really like. neck curls slash extensions with a band quite honestly now the reason why i say that versus with a plate is that when you use a plate you tend to put a whole bunch of extra muscles which can include your lower back your abs your fucking arms your forearms that move the weight that aren't your neck with a band, it ain't nothing but your neck moving it. Now, if you have a neck harness, that's also good too. And then that's also gonna be your curls and your extensions. You can get a good stretch on this as well. So these are all shortening exercises. You can get a good stretch by just letting your neck extend and you know stretch at the bottom of each movement now be careful consult your doctor you really want to be super high on rep quality with these not only because one is your neck's just going to benefit from that because or two you just don't want to injure something in your spinal cord like that's going to fuck you up for life cause nerve pain it's not a fun day lats shortening Okay, so again, any neutral grip pull. That's your bread and butter, neutral grip pulls. You could also do neutral grip pullovers. Neutral grip, straight arm pull downs. Like the kind Tom Platts used to sacrifice his soul on. These actually let you get a good lengthening effect as well. Let you get a good lengthening effect. Now let's get into some of the muscle groups that you don't think about. We talked about neck. Let's talk about the obliques. Oblique weighted sit-ups. Your obliques, you can see them from the from the back. They are an element of your back development that you might not see necessarily unless you're pretty lean from the back, but if you get your obliques meteor, it's gonna make your back much more powerful and much more stable. And it's just more aesthetic. These muscles right here, if they're real small, just subtract them from this guy's from this guy's back development. Suddenly his back doesn't look as impressive or as strong or as sturdy. Likewise, if you get those muscles bigger, it's gonna help you brace and stay extended during things like deadlift, squats, so on. Here's something with back that I wanna talk about. So. These are all pretty self-explanatory. It's all be timestamped. Back is something I wanna take a little bit more time on. Back does have an element of flexion to it that you can train. And then if you're a bodybuilder, you should train. On deadlifts, absolutely not, just because there's so much other shit going on, but you can train that extension on a few other things. And this is all in a pretty high rep range, okay? so. 10 to 20 and the name of the game 
is to pick those tier three movements that I talk about my good mornings versus um, RDL slash stiff leg deadlifts videos. These are all videos that have a very high stimulus and low fatigue just because through virtue of, you know, the way you're holding the bar or the way you're performing the exercise, you don't need very much weight to perform these, okay? So this is the only time that you're going to use flexion and extension. Flexion rows. It's a, it's a row where instead of saying totally extended the entire time and placing isometric contraction on your spinal erectors, you go through flexion at the bottom and then you extend back the neutral. That is gonna isometrically contract your spinal erectors at the top and flex them from the bottom. That's about the best one. Now you can also do this uh, flexion back extensions. Really just wanted to cover these two. So those are gonna cover that flexion aspect, the shortening, the squeeze of the spinal erectors, which you can use to get an extra element of hypertrophy that you are not using now. Again, light grade movements. You are not flexing your fucking spine with a deadlift. I didn't tell you to do that, so if you do that, that's your dumb ass. Just wanna make sure we win everything before we, uh, before I let y'all guys go today. Uh, we went through neck, upper back, rear delts, obliques. Yeah, we're pretty good to go. This next one is gonna come on Wednesday. Like I said, this is a treat for y'all. Let me know if y'all have any questions. Y'all be easy.